guys, how's it going? Today we are working on several fun things. We're starting here in the Hartley. We are going to be straining and bottling our rosemary tincture, which we started in here in January. And it has been just over eight weeks. It's ready to go, ready to be bottled. When we're done with that, we're gonna head out to the garden to plant five oh so easy ice bay roses. And when we're done with that, we'll be in the greenhouse for our last round of seed starting for 2024. So it's those seeds that you wanna start four to six weeks before your average last frost date. And I will give you a list of those when we get in there. Like I do have some sweet peas soaking in there. We've got some Artemisia, Cress. We've got corn cockle, marigolds. There might be a few more. Anyway, we've got several to start. Okay, so a tincture, you guys, is a highly concentrated extract of whatever herb you're working with. So in this case, it's rosemary. You cut up your herb. We used about a cup of rosemary in this bottle, and then I covered over it with apple cider vinegar. You could also use alcohol like vodka, which I think does have a longer shelf life when you use an alcohol versus apple cider vinegar. Now a tincture can be used in a lot of different ways. If you're using it medicinally, I do have to disclaimer, like do your own research, make your own decisions, talk to your doctor. I grew up using this kind of stuff, so it's really fun to kind of start in doing this again. Now, when I used my apple cider vinegar, I didn't realize that I had the type that has the cayenne pepper in it. So it, rosemary tinctures you can use like on your scalp for like flaky scalp or if you are st struggling with thinning hair, that sort of thing, rosemary said to help with that. I will not be using mine that way. I don't struggle with that issue, thankfully, but I would not use this one on my skin because it has the cayenne pepper in it. This one I will be taking orally. So we're gonna bottle it into these dark amber dropper bottles and you can do 15 to 30 drops under your tongue, I think a couple of times a day if you wanted to. Um, so anyway, that is how I'm gonna be using it. And it's really good for cognitive issues, memory, um, hair related things, anti-inflammatory. There's a whole list of things that it's good for and you can look that up and kind of see for yourself. But we're gonna be double straining it. I've got this fine mesh strainer. I'm gonna strain it into here and then we'll strain it from there into our bottles and my funnel is not quite the right size. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to be super careful. In fact, I might ask Erin to come and hold one of the things for me so I don't make a mess. They're just so easy to put together and I think they're so beneficial if you can you know, rely on plant-based you know, uh, remedies rather than other things. So anyway, I'm excited to smell it. I haven't smelled it since we bottled it. Whoa, it smells like rose. Rosemary. Ugh. Okay, let me get close in on this. All right, so I'm going to just pour it into my strainer here, or my sieve. It's about all the liquid I can get out of there. Okay, so after the first strain, this is what it's looking like. We've got, what is that, about a half cup is what came out of that. And I brought three bottles out, which I think should be plenty, maybe even too much. Aaron is on his way out here so he can help. Can you help hold a, a funnel? Sure. Okay. <laughs> okay. You got it okay? Yeah. Okay. Here we go. I'm going to drain it. Can you watch the level in the bottle? Full. What do we got? Full. Oh, it's full? All the I way? It's over full. Oh, geez. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Well, <laughs> kind of. Is it lined up now? Yeah. Is it overfilling? No. Is it all on the table? Yes. Oh, for crying out loud. <laughs> okay. Is that, oh, is that all you had? That's, that's all I had. Okay. Thank, thank you for your help. Okay. Most appreciated. What, what, like, do I need to wash my hands? Or like, no. Oh, okay. Enjoy the benefits to your skin. Oh, okay. It's not like toxic or anything? It, no, it's a tincture. <laughs> it's not meant to be toxic. <laughs> is it going to kill your plants? No. Okay. Might be a good bug deterrent. Okay, well. Thank you. Carry on. We ended up with just over a bottle and a half, which I think we would have had two full bottles if we didn't spill some, which we did. And that was bound to happen with the size of funnel that I have. I need to get one that's much more narrow uh, that fits into the mouth of these little dropper bottles. So now what you do is just take some up in the dropper and you drop it under your tongue. I think the easiest way to go about it though is just to get a regular spoon and put however many drops you're gonna take, which like I said, the range is usually 15 to 30 drops. So drop that into a regular spoon so that you can just kind of gauge how much to put in the spoon every day and just take it that way. That way you don't have to count out 15 or however many drops every single time you do it. But I'm just gonna go ahead and put that right under my tongue. <laughs> Could be worse. 
it's very actually quite bright in flavor, very strong in rosemary. It enters your bloodstream the quickest when you put it under your tongue. So just 15 drops of this a day and you guys are going to see my memory improve drastically. I'll be able to recall all sorts of planting dates and plant names and such, hopefully. So this is done. I'm going to make sure to label them rosemary tincture. I'm going to note that it was with apple cider vinegar and I don't get any cayenne, none of it. There's no spice whatsoever. But anyway, I'm going to label it that as such and then put the date it was bottled. Okay, so now that this is done, we are gonna head out and get our roses planted. Here are the roses. We've got five of them and you can see that they haven't leafed out yet, but they're all budded up. They look like our other roses out in the landscape. These wintered over uh, behind our greenhouse and they are gonna go right over here near the Vanderwolf pine. You can see we're right near the flower garden and the orchard. And we, I think, are expecting possibly some rain. Looks like it, doesn't it? But these roses, you guys, they only grow two to three feet tall and wide. So they're really easy to tuck in. They're not gonna take up an enormous amount of space and they don't need to be deadheaded. They'll continue to bloom throughout the whole season and they don't need any major pruning either. I mean, you can, if you want to, you can go in and clean them out. And I do that every once in a while with my landscape roses, like the shrub type roses, where I'll go in and just kind of decongest the center of the shrub but it's not necessary to do that. But it's the simplicity of the blooms for me. I love the, it's kind of a milky white and then they've got bright yellow stamens. I think they're gonna actually look really pretty in cut flower arrangements as well as out in the landscape. And they are a zone three through nine. So I think what we'll do, we're just gonna grab one of these. We're gonna take it right over here and I think we'll plant all five of them near each other, right here, because we don't have, well, we don't have anything right in here. We did plant that service berry right there and we've got a, cypress there's a smoke bush we've got in this little spot some echinacea right in here and then there's some lemon squeeze uh, penicetum which are awesome and then there's one caryopteris i had a uh saguaro cypress i think it was a saguaro cumulus saguaro cypress i need that rosemary tincture to kick in <laughs> Uh, but it did not thrive. I had two others in containers behind the Hartley and those look good. This one just did not make it. So there is a little hole here, which might be perfect. Uh, it's not quite perfect. I think I need to cite it a little bit further away from our Beyond Midnight Caryopteris. I thought if we popped a few in here, that might be a nice bright light in here. And do you guys remember when we planted all those bare root Ringo double pink roses out here last spring? 16 of them. And I was so certain that I was gonna lose over half of them and I didn't lose a single one. They're all leafing out. They're little, but they're gonna look so awesome in this space. You can see we've got some banana splash daffodils going for it right now in this area, looking really cheerful. But there's just this huge drift of the double pinks. And I wanna call them Strawberry Crush. I don't know why. Every single time I wanna talk about that rose, I have to double check the name <laughs> to look it up to verify that it's double pink because I, I always think it's gonna be Strawberry Crush because that's what it looks like to me. For tools, we have not mulched out here. In fact, you can probably see all of the fertilizer we came through last week and got everything fertilized. So we need to scrape that in or scratch that in and then we're gonna mulch. So I am gonna use an auger and I typically use the seven inch auger for pots this size and really for all of my even gallon perennials because it makes a nice size hole. I think I use the seven inch with the heavy duty tip, this right here, and the three inch auger, the Laura Edition three inch auger the most out of all the augers that we have. I do use the two inch and the nine inch occasionally, but it's mostly the three and the seven. And we've got a bit of biotone here and my kneeling pad, so we should be good to go here. So let's get these placed and planted. I think they're gonna look so pretty right here. So I ended up doing three on this side. There's one sort of in between the Caryopteris and the Penicetum, kind of bumped back, and then another one here and another one right there. So we'll come in with some more things, you know, in between. But I decided instead of having a, a hedge look, I kind of wanted them to be separate plants uh, with the ability to put other things around. And then the other two I put over here. 
So one a little bit further back, one a little bit further forward, again with room to do some things around them. And it ended up having to redig a couple of the holes because I didn't have my spacing quite right. But got it done in the end, and I think they're all pretty much the same same distance apart from one another. Five shoe lengths apart, as are these. And I cannot wait because it feels like things are just like this crab apple. They're just ready to wake up and do their thing and it's gonna look so different out here. Look at this crab apple. It is just loaded up with buds. This thing's gonna be so gorgeous. Little blue meringue lilac down here loaded up with buds. And even our brand new service berry. This is gonna be just a flurry of white blooms. I can't wait. And I think I got, what, three or four raindrops on me while we were out getting this done, and it looks like we might get some blue sky. It's gonna be on and off today, I think. So we're gonna head to the greenhouse to do our seeds next. Do you hear it? It's not raining very hard, but just hard enough to make it so pleasant in here. Oh, is it already done? just barely sprinkling. But here's what we've got, you guys. I've got three different varieties of sweet peas. That's all I wanna grow this year. We've got the Spencer ice cream, which is a nice white one. Old Times, which is kind of a pastel blend. And I think maybe one of the most fragrant uh, sweet peas that I've ever grown. And Blue Ripple, which is a beautiful purpley blue. And then we've got Cress, Green Dragon. I'm just gonna start a small tray of this and the rest of these are going to my sister-in-law. And then we've got Dawn Creek Blush Corn Cockle. Both of these are from Florette. And then we've got the Sweet Annie Artemisia, White Swan Marigolds, which are not white. They are very pale yellow, but they're beautiful. And then we've got both the common and Roman varieties of chamomile or chamomile or chamomile. Ask Kevin, he knows. And that plant is the wonderful chamomile. And the last thing I've got are the Fama White Pincushion Flowers. Now we already seeded a tray in here, but the last round of seeds I put in here, some of them did not germinate very well or did, did not germinate at all because I think it got too hot in here. It was like high 90s and I had the seed trays under uh, humidity domes. I just didn't think about it. So I have reseeded a couple of the trays. They're in the studio now where the temperature stays more at a constant 70 degrees instead of you know, just being a wild swing of temperatures in here. Some of them did really well though. Like you can't see very many of them yet, but there's the tall blue agaratum. Most of the cells came up. Most of the cells of the celosia came up. All of the status, status is easy to grow. Uh, and then my pincushion flowers were very spotty and the fama white was the worst of all of them. I have since replanted Morgana and the fama deep blue, but I had to go searching for my fama whites. So I'm going to reseed this center area right here and I'll probably move this tray into the studio as well. Everything else is doing great. I mean, Crespedia, I only started one tray, but I split them and I'm gonna give one tray to my sister-in-law. Then we've got straw flowers right here. We've got Rudbeckia and Gomfrina. Our anise hyssop, which I just pinched a few of these. I just wanna see the difference between pinched ones and ones that are not pinched. I don't know, I mean, they're creating their own side branching beautifully anyway, but I just wanted to do some experimenting there. All of our geraniums are looking fantastic. Super happy with those. I've brought out some Echinacea and Lysianthus recently. And you know, Snapdragons, we've just recently pinched. We've got Lysianthus looking great. In fact, I might throw up one of, another one of those low cats and get those planted out. And then we've got Echinops right here. More trays of Lysianthus. And look at our mint. We just planted that. Look at how full it's already cotton in these containers. I'm gonna have to bump them up like in a couple weeks. And also you guys, Benjamin started uh, bean seeds. We were learning about the different parts of the seed and you know, watching seeds grow. And so he planted these seeds and they've got beans. I'll see if he wants to harvest these and maybe we can cook up a very small batch. Our Crispino iceberg lettuce is looking good. Uh, I did a second batch of radishes and they're, they're ready. Look at those. Oh my goodness, this windowsill planter is just loaded. And we also have several artichokes now. And I just popped the lids of the Hartley cold frames a little bit more open. And there's a few of those uh, artichokes that wintered over that have fruit forming as well. And Aaron's avocado tree, look at that. There's new leaves, it's, it's so tall. <laughs> look at that. But I'm just thrilled to see the blooms and the leaves on it. The little one did not fare quite as well. But Anyway, these are the trays that we are going to be seeding the sweet peas in. Uh, these are called root trainers. So you put your soil in there and when you're ready to pop your seedlings out, you can just open it up, 
take the whole root ball out without doing any disruption on the root ball. Sweet peas like to have a lot of uh, room for root growth, so these are really good. Also, anything that you're starting from seed that says that it doesn't love to be transplanted or doesn't like to have root disturbance, these are the best kind to use because they've got such a nice large reservoir to grow and to start with, and then when you can just not really manhandle the root ball to get them out of a seed tray. These just are so nice. Okay, so we're just gonna be following the instructions on the back of the seed packets. I've got my seed starting mix out here. We'll pre-moisten that, fill all of our trays, which I tend to like to do that first, fill all the trays, get all the labels in, and then do all my seeds, kind of assembly line style. And it goes really quickly when you do it that way. I'm using the back side of some price tags that came out of a couple of things I've already bought this spring. Big worm, nice. got all the seed trays prepared, filled with soil, three that I could not fit on the table. But what we're gonna do is four 72 count trays, one for each of the chamomile, uh, one for the marigold, and then one for the sweet Annie Artemisia. The 24 count cell trays, we're gonna do the green dragon crest and the Dawn Creek blush corn cockle. And then we've got our three root trainer trays for all of the sweet peas, which I have had soaking for several hours. They're looking good. I don't know if you can see that light colored slit on the side of that seed. Soaking the seed just helps soften that outer coating and break it open so that the seed has an easier time germinating. So soaking isn't 100% necessary. There are some people who just plant them straight, straight in the ground even. And I used to do that and I had pretty good luck doing it that way, but I like to get a little bit of size and start a little bit early, earlier than I can plant them outside. It's fun. And I am going to shoot for about two seeds per cell on all of these. So let's get that done.
everything planted. We've got the sweet peas in here sitting on the ground. I had a few extra seeds, so I popped them in this one gallon container. I also had some extra seed starting mix. There's a little bit at the bottom of that tray as well. So I'll probably see what else I could start just to utilize the rest of that. But I am not going to dome these. It stays warm enough in here. So these will just hang out here until they sprout and start to grow. I got the pincushion flower seeds replanted and they want to be surface sown which feels so weird because they're such big seeds but they need light in order to germinate so i just kind of try to press the seeds down into the soil so that at least there's contact and i'll probably move this tray in i think i already mentioned that so that it's got more of a solid temperature consistent temperature to germinate and everything else has been moved into the studio they're all under grow lights they've all been domed so we should see some action here pretty quick the only other thing I was thinking, and maybe I could use the rest of that soil for this, I haven't started any amaranth, and I don't use a ton of it, but I do like the, the green amaranth quite a lot. So I, my, emerald tassels is the name of it. 15 drops of this a day, and you guys are going to see my memory improve drastically. So I may grab some of those seeds and get those started here soon. And you guys, that is going to do it for today's projects. A little bit of seed starting, a little bit of planting, a little bit of herbal remedies. I love it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you're having a great day and we will see you tomorrow. Bye.